Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, creating dot plots. So example one says hours of sleep. Robert, a sixth grader at Roosevelt Middle School, usually goes to bed around 10 p.m. and gets up around 6 a.m. to get ready for school. That means he gets about eight hours of sleep on a school night. He decided to investigate the statistical question. How many hours per night do sixth graders usually sleep when they have to school the next day? Robert took a survey of 29 sixth graders and collected the following data to answer the questions. So here are all the number of hours kids got that he asked. Robert decided to make a dot plot of the data to help him answer his statistical question. Robert first drew a number line and labeled it from 5 to 12 to match the lowest and highest numbers, lowest and highest numbers of sleep. So there's the 5 and there's the 12. Robert's data is not included. So he did not include how many hours he sleeps. Okay, so to start off, what I would suggest you do, when you make a dot plot, you draw a number line from the lowest number to the highest number of, for hours of sleep. Label it dot plot of numbers of hours slept. So you wouldn't have to put this, but this should be there. Number of hours slept and then five through 12. I don't encourage you to cross numbers out like this because when you're using pencil, it is usually hard to see what you've crossed out. If you make a mistake, there's no going back. So I would suggest circle. So circle the seven and put a dot at seven. So down here it says, he then placed a dot above the seven for the first value in the data set. He continued to place dots above the numbers until each number in the data set were represented by a dot. So here is an eight. So I would put an eight here. Here's a five. I put the five here and so on. Here are three nines in a row. So I could speed up this process by just simply doing this. Okay, there's my three nines. Here's two sevens, so add two more to seven, and then two tens, and we continue this until we are done. Here's an 11, a nine, three eights, one, two, three, 12, six, 11, and so on and so on. Two eights this time. Three nines. An eight. A ten. Two nines. And an eight. Okay, so we got up pretty high up here, so it's going to be hard to read now. So if I had moved all of my dots here down, then it'd probably have been better fit down here because this is too close to here. Okay, so that's how you create a dot plot. So now it says complete Robert's dot plot by placing a dot above the corresponding number on the number line for each value in the data set. If there is already a dot above a number, then add another dot above the dot already there. Robert's datum is not included. So I've done that. And number two says, what are the least and most hours of sleep reported on the survey of sixth graders? Okay, so I would say the least was five hours and the most was 12 hours. What number of hours slept occurred most often in the data sets. So now when we go back to our data set, if we look here, um, it was a close one between eight and nine and the way I drew this, it's hard to see. So I'm gonna go back up here and there's an eight, four, five, six, seven, eight eights, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nines. So the answer is nine hours. Nine kids slept nine hours. What number of hours of sleep would you use to describe the center of the data? So when we go back now, we look here, 
I would have to say that the center of the data would be around eight or nine. And I'll say about eight or nine. Now it says think about how many hours of sleep you usually get in high school at night. How does your number compare with the number of hours of sleep from the survey of sixth graders? So I get up pretty early, probably 440, I think we get up. And so in bed by nine, so that'd be about seven and one half hours. Okay, so I'm a little bit less than the average sixth grader. Okay, here are the data of the number of hours of sixth graders usually sleep when they do not have school the next day. Make a dot plot of the number of hours slept when there is no school the next day. So the first thing I want to do is, just like before, find the least amount of sleep, and there is a five here, I don't think there's anything lower, and find the greatest number, which I see 12, but I don't see anything. Oh, here's 13. So we're gonna make a dot plot with a number line from 12 to 13. Okay, so here is my number line. Lowest was five, highest is 13, and I labeled it number of hours slept when there's no school. So now let me erase this here. And I'm just going to start over here, and I'm gonna circle them as I go so I can keep track. So there's a seven, there's an eight, there's a 10, here's an 11, then a five, and then a six, and then a 12. So I've done, so I've done these, two 13s, a seven, a nine, an eight, and a 10. So seven, eight, nine, 10. So seven, eight, nine, 10. 12, 11, 12. I'll do a few at a time. 12, 11, 12, eight, nine, 10, 11. Ten, twelve, three elevens, a twelve, two elevens, and a ten. Okay, so that's all those. Okay, so there is our dot plot of number of hours slept when there's no school. So there's still some who aren't getting much sleep, five hours but there's a couple who got a lot of sleep. They went to bed at like 10 and slept until 11 the next morning. Okay, when there's no school the next day, what number of hours of sleep would you use to describe the center of the data? So now looking at this data, it's kind of shifted to the right here. And I would say that the center would probably be about 11 hours or maybe 10. I'd say around 11, it looks like it's centered here. Number eight, what are the least and most number of hours slept with no school the next day reported in the survey? Least was five hours. Most was 13 hours. I wouldn't even feel good after waking up after that much sleep. Number nine, do students tend to sleep longer when they do not have school the next day than when they do have school the next day? Explain your answer. So what we should do here is look at this dot plot, okay? Centered around 11 hours and go back to the one when there was school and that was centered around eight or nine. So it looks like there's an increase of two to three hours of sleep. So I'd say yes, students seem get more sleep when there's no school. Okay, example two, building and interpreting a frequency table. A group of sixth graders investigated the statistical question, how many hours per week do sixth graders spend playing a sport or an outdoor game? Here are the data students collected from a sample of 26 sixth graders. Okay, so there's our total. Showing the number of hours per week spent playing a sport or a game outdoors. 
to help organize the data, the students summarize the data in a frequency table. A frequency table is a is list possible data values and how often each value occurs. Okay, so first of all, we need to have um, a heading. So what are we counting? Number of hours. So I'll say number of hours. And we're going to tally these. It's called a tally when you count. And the frequency is just going to be the number after we tally them. So a tally is an ongoing count. Okay, so to build a frequency table, first make three columns. Label one column number of hours playing a sport or game. Label the second column tally. And label the third column frequency. Since the least number of hours was zero and the most was 12, Okay, so if I look up here, 0 was my minimum, 12 was my max, okay, then we're going to use that in the number of hours column. So I'm going to start at 0 and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so then if I get rid of these circles here and I'm going to just put a mark under them as I do it and I'll tally it. There's a three, there's a two, here's a zero, and we just keep doing this. Here's a six, here's a three, and there's three of them. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Here's two ones. So one, one, two twos, one, Two, here's an eight, a twelve, one, two, three fours. So go one, two, three on your tally. Two threes. So when I get to the fifth one, I'm going to draw lines through like this one, two, three. Two ones, one, one. Two zeros. Those kids need to get out more. A six, a two, a three, and then another two makes the fifth one, so that's a diagonal. Okay, so there is our tally. And then over here under frequency, we write down the number of times that occurred. So there are three zeros, four ones, five twos, eight threes, three fours, zero fives, Two sixes, zero sevens, one eight, zero nine, zero ten, zero elevens, and one was out there for twelve hours. Good for that kid. Okay, so there's our frequency table. That is how you make a frequency table. Then we answer questions about the frequency table. Complete the tally mark column in the table created. For example, two. Done. For each of the number of hours, find the total number of tally marks and place in the frequency column in the tables created in example two. Done. Make a dot plot of the number of hours playing sports or playing outdoors. So that's what we need to do now is make a dot plot of our tally table, our frequency table. Okay, so here is my minimum of zero, a maximum was 12 hours, and I label the dot plot number of hours playing. So now when I go back to my frequency table, I look at my tally. So I have three zeros and four ones. So this is like a lot quicker once we do a tally table. Three zeros. One, two, three. There were four ones. One, two, three, four. Okay. So done. Done. Now we have five, eight, three. Five, eight, three. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Go back, keep going, and then it's zero, two, zero, one. Zero, two, zero. Zero, two, zero, one. Okay, we're almost done. 
and there were none until 12, and that's our last one, so I got a dot way out here. Okay, so here is the dot plot from our frequency table. So if you do a frequency table first, it just makes it a lot easier to create your dot plot. What number of hours describes the center of this data? And on this one, I would probably say around between two and three. I'd say around two or three. How many of the sixth graders reported that they spend eight hours or more a week playing a sport outdoors? So eight hours or more is this way, and there are two. Okay, so two students. Number 15, the sixth graders, let me erase this. 15 says the sixth graders wanted to answer the question, how many hours do sixth graders spend per week playing a sport or playing an outdoor game? Using the frequency table in the dot plot, how would you answer the sixth graders question? Okay. Okay, so my answer to that would be most sixth graders spend about two to four hours. So looking up at this dot plot, most spend about two to four hours right here per week playing a sport or playing outdoor. So you just say the majority are within this region here. So you might even want to go but down to one, one to four hours, something like that. Okay? And that is the end of lesson three. Go do your problem set. And oh, by the way, smash that like.